By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in today's episode, I am playing with a red and white deck that I've called Dragon's Surge. And I'm playing against Martin, who's playing with a deck called Iron Man's Scrapyard. It's white and it's black. And the cool thing about both of these decks is that they are made up completely out of reprints because this is the first match that I played in a tournament called the Reprint Masters. And in the Reprint Masters, you were only allowed to play with cards of Chronicles, Revised and Fourth Edition. And also in this tournament, uh, Mana Burn is real. So if you wanna know more about the rules, check the description below. As always, I've put a link there and some extra information about the specific rule sets. And I've also added timestamps for you. So for example, if you wanna skip the deck tech sections, just click on MTG games, that will take you straight to the games. Or if you wanna to go to a specific deck tech, then you can look perhaps at my deck or at Martin's deck. I have to say Martin's deck is hilarious. He's a German player from the Rhineland Adventures. And he's brought, I mean, <laughs> it's a sweet deck, man. I like I like my deck too, but I have to admit some of the uh, alters that uh, Martin is playing is just very entertaining. Okay, so without, uh, Without any further ado, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. And I'm actually going to start with the deck of Martin, Iron Man's Scrapyard. And here we see the deck of Martin, so Iron Man's Scrapyard, and that's named after the four uh, brass men there in the top. They're actually altered to look like Iron Man. I think that's absolutely gorgeous, Martin, well done. And uh, so Iron Man's Scrapyard, what does it want to do? It basically wants to send Iron Man to the scrapyard and then to come out of the scrapyard kind of reborn as a Triskelion or a Tetravis, right? When you look at this deck, because Martin is playing with, with three Hell's Caretakers and four Animate Deaths. So there is a big reanimator component in this deck. Now Hell's Caretaker is a card that maybe you're not that, um, it's, it's not that well known. Um, Hell's Caretaker is a card that's been reprinted in Chronicles and hence it's legal in this reprint format. So what it does, it's one black and three to cast for a Summon Hell's Caretaker, it's just a 1-1, one, one, but it's all about its tap ability. You can tap it and you can sacrifice a creature and return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Now, unfortunately, you can only activate this ability during your upkeep. I mean, imagine if you can just um, activate it at instant speed, this card would see a lot more play, but still, it's a cool card, it's a useful card, and I really love the idea of sacking a brass man as old iron, like Iron Man Scrapyard, and kind of rebuilding it, and, and it comes back as a Triskelion. And obviously, Triskelion is a great creature, Tetravis as well, to combine with the Hell's Caretaker, because uh, Triskelion comes into play with three plus one plus one counters on it, right? So it's six to cast for a four four, with three plus one plus one counters. And you can shoot those counters off to deal one damage to any target. So it gets smaller every time. So at a certain point, it's maybe only a two, two, and it can then, uh, or it's only one, one, I mean, because the counters are off the Triskelion. And then you can sack it with your Hell's Caretaker. And if there's another Triskelion or a better creature in the bin, you can kind of get that creature back on the battlefield. Now, I think one of the biggest challenges here for this deck of Martin, when I'm looking at this deck, is that it's missing a way to put creatures in the bin, right? In Martin's graveyard. I do see two Jalem Tomes. I think those are gonna be really important for Martin here because with the Jalem Tome, he can draw a card and then he can choose to discard a big creature, right? And then he can get it back with Anime Dead or with Hell's Caretaker. The cool thing about Hell's Caretaker is it can also sack itself. Now, what, uh, what I really like in this deck, another thing I like, <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's a cool deck. Um, is the Fallen Angel. So Fallen Angel, a card from Legends originally, I think this is an original copy, uh, but it was also reprinted in Chronicles. And it is a 3-3 flyer for five mana. And you can sacrifice a creature uh, to give it plus two, plus one until end of turn. Now this is quite interesting, right? So if you have a Tetravis, for example, um, it's a flyer for uh, a one one flyer that comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. And during your upkeep, you can take those counters off, right? Make a little flyers. So you can have four one one flyers, then you can sec those um, flyers to your fallen angel. Your fallen angel will get huge. And let's say you sec all four of them. Why not? You know, you sec all four of them. That means that your fallen angel uh, will get plus eight plus four. So it will turn into an 11 seven. You can swing for 11 damage, that's kind of insane. And then maybe, you know, next turn, you can play an anime dead or whatever, the second main, you play an anime dead and you get the Tetravis back 
and you get to do it all over again. Another really cool thing with Tetravis is once you have those smaller 1-1 flyers, those Tetravites, you can also, of course, sack one 1-1 one, one flying Tetravite to your health caretaker and maybe get a trike back, you know, uh, get a fallen angel back, get an other, other Tetravis back. So it's really strong. Um, what else is there in the deck? Well, we kind of see the usual control elements from white, right? We see the three swords to plows here, the three disenchants and the balance, of course, really strong. And in black, we see, you know, the heavy mind twist, the demonic tutor. Those are the two cards you expect in every black deck, right? You also see um, two... Um, drain lives in here and I really like the drain lives in combination with uh, with the dark rituals and what you cl clearly see in this deck is that white is like really the second color it's black is the main color and artifacts actually artifacts are the main thing but after that it's black and after that it's white right so a drain life in this deck actually works because look at his lance he has got a lot of swamps. He's got uh, City of Brass that can make uh, black mana. He's got Scrub Lands that can make black mana. He's got four Dark Rituals that can make a lot of black mana. So I think Drain Life is actually a win con in this deck. So um, this is the deck of Martin. Martin, thank you for bringing this to the table. Iron Man's Scrapyard. And now let's take a look at my deck, Dragon's Search. And here we see my deck, Dragon's Search. And this is named after two things, the dragons that are in the deck. As you can see, four dragon whelps, two sheep and dragons, and four granite gargoyles. I know they're not dragons, but they're still really cool and you can pump them. Because that's what all these creatures have in common, right? All my creatures can be pumped, buffed with red mana. And that's actually quite important in my strategy because I'm playing with three power surges. Now, power surge is an enchantment for two red to cast. And it reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Power Surge deals X damage to that player, where X is the number of untapped lands they controlled at the beginning of this turn. Now we are playing with Mana Burn. Let's say we're not playing with Mana Burn, then this card is useless because your opponent can just tap out all the mana without being punished. But Mana Burn means that for each mana that's tapped that you're actually not using, you get a damage. So the trick of just tapping out and saying, you know, Power Surge doesn't work on me, doesn't work in an environment where you play with mana burn. So I'm actually quite excited to play with Power Surge. This is the first time that I'm really playing with the card. So uh, it's new territory for me and I'm looking forward to try it out. My reasoning behind Power Surge and this deck was, if I have Power Surge, I wanna make sure that I can tap out. So I thought, what's an easy way to tap out? And then I thought of dragons. I'm like, I can use my excess mana, my red mana, to put it all in the Sheevans, in the in the Dragon Whelps and the Gargoyles and not take any damage. And my opponent has a huge problem, right? My opponent has to use the Lance. If it cannot use it, it's just gonna die of its own Lance. And also there are Dragons on the board. So there's just a lot of threats going on. That was kind of in my mind. And talking about the Dragons, all the creatures in my deck fly. So that's pretty good. So I'm playing with two Earthquake. That's not a big surprise, right? Because it's one Rat and X deals X damage to each player and each creature without flying. So my creatures don't get any pain, but my opponent's creatures do. So that's kind of like a no brainer inclusion. Now, when I was building the deck, I also realized that I could have gone another route entering, um, playing Mana Barbs, for example, and Circle of Protection Red. Like there are some really cool power search decks that I, I, I found and that people actually shared with me and shared their ideas with me. So. Uh, maybe I'm going to play with Power Surge next time, but then a little, bit, a little bit more heavy on that Power Surge Mana Barbs combo. But that's something for next time. In this tournament, I chose to go this direction. What I like about this direction is, yes, you play with Power Surge, and it's you could say it's a key card, but if you don't draw into Power Surge or your Power Surge gets destroyed, it's not the end of the world. There are more strategies, right? I mean, I've got very strong creatures in the form of dragons. I've got three disenchants, three swords to fix all sorts of problems. I've got a direct damage package because I'm playing with red. I've got four bolts. I've got two disintegrates. I've got the two earthquakes. So I'm feeling really strong here. I also play with two GM day tomes so I can draw into some extra cards. And um, because I've got some costly spells, I decided to play with some mana ramp. And instead of going for the mana vaults, I decided to go for Felwer Stone. And I'm doing this because I kind of feel that, you know, mana vault always ends up dealing a lot of damage and I don't have any five casting cost creatures. I do of course have the two Sheevans. So I thought it's probably better for me to have a turn two Felwer Stone and be able to cast a turn three Dragon Whelp than to have a turn one Mana Vault, cast a turn two Dragon Whelp, take a damage from the Mana Burn and then keep taking damage after that, if you can still follow me. So I just felt that in this case Felwer Stone is more valuable. A cool little trick with Felwer Stone 
is that if your opponent controls a city of brass, and I think a lot of opponents do in old school, Flower Stone becomes kind of a rainbow stone. It can make any color of mana because your opponent has a city of brass. So that's a really neat trick. So I'm I'm kind of rooting for Flower Stone here. I think it's a very good card and I'm looking forward to show the potential uh, right here in these games that I'm going to post from the Reprint Masters. I'm also playing with a Wheel of Fortune. I mean, always a good card when you're low because the deck has a lot of control cards that are cheap to cast like Lightning Bolt, Swords, Disenchant. You could end up like having nothing in your hand and that's just super annoying. So then a Wheel of Fortune is of course fantastic. Now maybe you're wondering why is he only playing with one Mistress Factory? Because Mistress Factory is also great with a mana burn strategy. Why? You can activate your Mistress Factory as often as you want. You don't only have to do it once. You can do it multiple times, right? It can become a 2-2 multiple times. So it's a great way to kind of sink your mana into. But there is a but. With the Reprint Masters, you're only allowed to play with one Mistress Factory. And we did this because we wanted to see what's going to happen when we restrict this card. Is it going to have a big impact? Or are we going to have more, uh, more interesting games or not? So it's kind of an experiment to see where the Mistress Factory will take us if it's restricted. Maybe there's one other thing that I'd like to point out and then we're definitely going to go to the games and that's the fact that I'm also playing with four basic planes because I can already hear you think, hey man, you're saying you're going to use all your excess mana and feed it to, to pump your dragons, but that's not going to work because you're playing with white mana and, and white mana cannot pump a dragon. You're right, but hear me out. It's only four basic lands, so I think I'll survive. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it'll kill me, <laughs> you know, I've been wrong before, but I, you know, I believe, I believe all my other lands are capable of making red mana, except for the four basic planes, the strip mine, but the strip mine, I can just strip something if need be. And of course the Mistress Factory, but I can animate that. So I'm actually happy when I have that Mistress Factory on the board because it's a great mana sink as well. Okay, this is my deck. Let me know in the comments below what you think of both of our decks. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear what you think of a tournament with only reprints. I think it's really cool and interesting to see, okay, can we make old school a little bit more budget friendly? And you know, what kind of decks can we build if we decide to take that route? So that's basically what this tournament is trying to show. So this is my deck. We've seen Martin's deck. Now let's go to the games. Game number one. Here we go. Martin sitting on the left and I'm sitting on the right with the Timmy Playmat and the Timmy sleeves. And if you like those sleeves, you can actually order them at your playmat. There's a link in the description below with a discount code. Ooh, but look at Martin go your Iron Man turn one. That's a one three. It's a brass man. And if you attack with it and you want to untap it next turn, you got to pay one to do that. And there is a Swamp. He also has a Mistress Factory, so potentially he can attack me for three. Decides not to. Probably a little bit worried about a Lightning Bolt. I think that's a good decision uh, not to attack, to be worried about that, because he is playing against a red deck. And he's playing a Mana Volt here and passing turn. So Martin's off to a really good start. And I'm playing a Disenchant on that Mana Volt. I don't want him to be able to cast like a big scary creature next turn and pass turn again. And now I am tapped out. Let's see, Martin does have to pay one land, one mana to untap his Iron Man, chooses to use um, the Mistress Factory to do that. So Iron Man is now untapped. I mean, he could swing in again, that's not a problem. Looks like he's a little bit into tank here, deciding to attack for one. I'm gonna go to 18. Perhaps he's got a Dark Ritual in hand, thinking about using it or not using it, but it does look like he's got a mana problem now. And I'm playing a Stone Rain. Oh, that is brutal. Making matters even worse here for Martin. He's using his only land to untap the Brass Man. He needs to draw into some swamps. I hope he does, though, that we can turn this into a real match, because now he's pretty far behind after that strong start. Remember, in turn two, he had Mistress Factory, Brass Man, and a Mana Vault in play. Oh, another Stone Rain. That is just a killer here for Martin. I'm so sorry, Martin. Well, actually, I'm not. I want to win this one. And uh, Martin now playing a Swamp, and he's not attacking. Keeping it at bay, of course, to block that Mistress Factory that I played out. And now I'm playing a Dragon Whelp, and it can start flying over Martin. And he's finding another Brass Man, another Iron Man altar that does look kind of cool. And next turn, I can start swinging in with my Flying Dragon Whelp. And that's exactly what I do. Pump it to a 3-3, three, three, keeping three mana open. Probably, yes, a Granite Gargoyle here. One uh, red and two to cast. It's a 2-2 two, two Flyer, and for one red, you can give it plus 0, oh, plus 1. 
Passing turn here, and there is a Mana Vault. Okay, so Martin is slowly finding some lands, casting Mana Vault. Maybe next turn he's able to do something. But, I mean, he's getting pretty far behind. He's on 17 now. Disenchant. Ah, oh, that is painful. And, of course, I'm going to try to keep his uh, his mana as low as possible. Now, dealing 7 damage because I'm pumping up that Dragon of full max. And there we see Martin dropping from 17 to 10. He's in huge, huge trouble. I mean... At least he needs a white and just cast uh, swords on that one Dragon Whelp. The Dragon Whelp needs to go. Oh man, and now I think I can already kill him. I can attack, I can animate my factory. Deciding not to. Oh, because I'm playing a Lightning Bolt. And that's a beautiful one that's signed by Christopher Russia. I probably wanted to use that one to finish Martin off. Martin, man, I mean, you couldn't find the lands. The lands that you found, I was able to destroy with my two Stone Rains. And then, um, you know, when you finally get, were able to cast some Mana Vault, I was able to destroy you with Disenchant. So there, there was really nothing you could do this game. Now we're going to go into our sideboards and uh, we're going to see what we're going to board in. I'm actually going to board in a Karma, so that could be even extra painful for Martin. But we'll have to see that in game number two. So let's go to the second game. Game number two, here we go. And it's Martin on the plate. Looks like he's taking a mulligan, going down to six cards. So... Again, that's not great. He's already one game behind. The good news is, though, that in the uh, Reprint Masters in the Timmy Talks tournament, each game counts for a point. So even if you're two games behind, it's still worth playing that last third game because that can give you another point. And the way these tournaments work, by the way, is you're in a group. So I'm in a group with three other players, including Martin, and then we play against each other best of three. And like I said, for each game one, you get a point, and the first player in the group advances to the top 16, and the eight best uh, second number twos advance and there are i believe 10 or 11 groups in total so if you get in that second spot you've got a pretty big chance of actually advancing to the top 16 as well now let's take a look at the game a lot of things have happened already it seems we see a disenchant there on the mana vault and there is another brass man and again it looks like martin has missed some land drops that is very unfortunate Especially since I'm able to keep uh, destroying those mana vaults of Martin. Casting a Dragon Whelp now. So that's going to fly over the Brass Man and over the Mistress Factory of Martin here. Martin's still on 20 though. But it's looking bad for him. Again missing a land drop. Playing another plane. So I can attack for 5 now if I want to. Or I can cast a Sheevan Dragon. Pumping for 4. So perhaps I have something in hand. Ooh, just passing turn here. Not doing anything else. That's interesting because I could have used the plateau to pump the Shivan, uh, the Dragon Whelp. Decided not to, so maybe that's just a miss from my side. Very interesting. I wonder why I didn't do that. And there is a City of Brass now. And I'm swinging in again. I mean, okay, just pumping for one. That probably means I'm going to cast, no, not a Shivan. Instead, a Dragon Whelp. Interesting that I'm not using that City of Brass. Maybe what I can think of is that I have a disenchant in hand and I want to disenchant the Mitra's factory if it decides to attack, but why would he? Okay, there's a terror. That's definitely a card that came in from the sideboard. Very good inclusion, of course, because terror can be played on all my creatures since they're all red. I don't have any artifact creatures or black creatures in my deck. So that's definitely going to make Martin's deck stronger. And now I can swing in for five, I assume. And I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm casting Shivan Dragon! Mother of all dragons! I love it. It's such an iconic card. It, whenever I would buy Revised back in the day, you know, in 94, 95, I wanted to crack a Shivan. I wanted to take a Shivan Dragon out of the booster. Never did, by the way. Never did. But um, yeah, always was a dream. I do think I pulled a Mamoti Jin out of a booster once. And now we see Martin playing a Dark Ritual. Tapping another one. So he's, he's got four mana and he plays a Demonic Tutor and a Terror. So that Terror is very well needed on the Chieven Dragon. Perhaps he's got a Demonic for another Terror and get rid of the Dragon Whelp next turn. Of course, it depends on what he has in hand. Remember, he is playing with Triskelions. So a Trike could also be enough to kill the Dragon Whelp. But of course, he doesn't have enough mana yet. I mean, mana has been a recurring problem for Martin in this match so far. I mean, game one, he basically lost because he didn't have enough lands or, or mana rocks, and what he had, I was able to destroy. And now game number two, he's behind again because of his lands. So uh, that's pretty tough for him. And uh, it looks like he's passing turn here after the shuffle, so I'm just gonna attack. I'm gonna deal four damage here. Do I have another Sheevan? 
No, I don't have enough mana for that though. Okay, there's a Karma. Ooh, Karma, that's bad. So Karma's an enchantment, two white and two. And it reads, during your upkeep, you get one damage for each swamp you control. You don't even have to tap them. So in this case, uh, Martin controls one swamp, so he gets one damage. And uh, yeah, he's on six, so uh, that's bad news. That means I think I can kill him next turn if my Dragon Whelp stays on the board, but it doesn't. There's the Terror, so probably that's the card he looked up with the Demonic Tutor. But now, I mean, that Karma is a huge problem here for Martin and casting a Jam Day Tome and also having four mana to spend on that in the end step on Martin to draw some extra cards. He's taking a damage again from that Karma. Gonna go down to five. Let's see what he can do. Plays a City of Brass, so at least that's something. But again, City hurts him as well. He's on five, you know, that's only five more turns because of that dreaded Karma. But there's a Disenchant. Okay, now we're talking. And then he passes turn, so on end step, I'm gonna draw an extra card, taking a damage from my own City, dropping to 13 here. And I just need creatures to finish him off, drawing another card. Apparently I'm not finding any. Looking at my hand and passing turn here. So at least this is good news for Martin. Getting a little bit of breathing space. Of course he's on five, decides to untap the Brass Man. Let's see if he can find something here. Another land would be really nice. Remember, he's playing with Triskelions, but also with Tetravus. He's playing with Fallen Angel. Like he needs, he needs a lot of mana to get his deck to work. We haven't seen a single Hell's Caretaker, by the way. That's kind of, I, I hope he gets to cast a Hell's Caretaker. Attacking it with the Factory, I'm on 10. It looks like I found a creature and, oh, found a Disintegrate on his life total. And then again, the Bolt. Man, oh, look at his hand. He had a Hell's Caretaker in hand. Oh, I think the problem here is Martin, of course, your land drops was a huge problem. And because you miss your land drops, you're under pressure because you're under pressure. You don't have time to do the goofy stuff, man. You need time to do the goofy stuff. I know, I know what that feels like. Oh man, okay, but the good news is we do play game number three because every game counts in this tournament. So hopefully in game three, we get to see Hell's Caretaker. I hope so. So let's go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So I really hope in this third game, Martin, that you find Hell's Caretaker, find enough lands, and can show your shenanigans. You can show what your deck wants to do because we haven't seen it reach its full potential. And I actually haven't played a power search as well. So you know, let's hope our decks can kind of start doing what they want to do. Although although the rest of my deck is, is, is working pretty good. Um, let's see, we're keeping our hands. I believe I'm actually taking a mulligan so I have to put a card on the bottom here, and that means a good start for Martin. It looks like Martin's gonna keep his first seven. And I've gotta to decide to put one card on the bottom there. There it goes, so six cards in hand, seven for Martin, Martin on the play, so he's got a little advantage here. Let's hope he can make good use of it. And again, a Mishra's Factory, and an Iron Man, a Brass Man turn one, that's pretty sweet. I think you've done it now in every game that we played, so that is an accomplishment alone by itself. Um, and there's a scrub land as well. So you're finding your lands, it's looking good. Of course he can attack now with the factory, but there's that lightning bolt risk. I think Martin, I wouldn't do it. I mean, it's up to you. I don't know what's in your hand, but I wouldn't attack with the factory. I would just leave it at bay here. You, you don't wanna have the risk of losing a land. I would just attack for one. And that's exactly what he does. So I'm on 19 and he passes turn. So let's see, I'm finding a Mishra's factory as well and passing turn here. And we see the Brass Man is tapped. Now he's untapping it now, tapping his factory to untap the Brass Man. Remember, you have to pay one to untap it. And he's also playing a second Scrub Land. So he's finding his lands, that's pretty good news. And he can keep his Brass Man untapped, works great against factories. And I think kind of in this matchup, Brass Man is not ideal um, because I'm not playing with a lot of ground creatures. And here we see one of my many flyers, the Granite Gargoyle, one red and two to cast for a two, two. Quick response by Martin here, Swords to Plows here is on my flyer. And uh, that's actually the first Swords that we've seen. So my Gargoyle is removed from the game. It's gone, absolutely gone. Let's see what he can do. Let's hope he's not going to miss a land drop here. Obviously, I want to win, don't get me wrong, but it's it's nice to see somebody's deck to work. You know, I mean, I just want to see Hell's Caretaker. You don't see Hell's Caretaker that often. 
Instead, he's attacking me for three. And I think that's a good decision because I was tapped out so he could attack with the factory safely, but he is missing his land drop. So that is very unfortunate. And I've played a City of Brass, so potentially I could cast um, I could cast a uh, Dragon Well up here. Instead, I'm tapping two for a Felwer Stone. Okay, not as great, but gets me a little bit closer to having six mana and then I can potentially cast a Sheevan, I guess. And it looks like he's going to keep the Brass Man tap playing out a Plains. Let's see what he's going to do. Dark Ritual. Okay, here we go. And there's a Triskelion. So Triskelion, six to cast for a 1-1 one, one with three plus one plus one counters. You can remove the counters to deal one damage to any target. So it's, it's a really good card here. And uh, let's see. I think Martin is kind of looking for a dice. And there it is. And am I going to destroy it? Double bolt, double bolt. That is a hefty price to pay though, because in response, Martin can take his three plus one plus one counters off to deal damage to me. That's why I'm on 14 and I've lost two cards to one creature. So this is a pretty good exchange for uh, for Martin. Of course, Martin had to use his dark ritual to cast the trike. So I guess uh, we're kind of even on that department, but at least I've... Um, Lost two um, two lightning bolts that are pretty precious here. Attacking with my mistress factory, by the way. So now we see Martin's on 18. He's untapping the factory. Let's see if he can find another land. Does he have more dark rituals? Anime death. Oh, sweet. That is so nice. And that's, of course, when you see your opponent using two cards to get rid of your creature. And you know, okay, I've got... Uh, you know, I've got an animate in hand. That must be a great feeling when you see your opponent go through all that, you know. So that's definitely a very good exchange for Martin. And um, I'm going to attack with the Whelp, kind of forcing Martin here to kill my Dragon Whelp. Doesn't want to take five damage, of course. And then I'm casting a Jam Day Tome. And um, I have a City of Brass untapped and a Mishra's Factory. There we see another Dark Ritual. There is the Fallen Angel, a 3-3, three, three, and you can sacrifice a creature to it to give it plus two, plus one, and it has flying. And I think that flying clause is quite important against my deck because I'm playing with only flyers. And my hand is looking pretty empty and I'm passing turn here. I think I've only got one card in hand in the GM Daytona. Things are looking up here for Martin. First off, he can swing for three with the Fallen Angel. The, the funny thing about Fallen Angel, by the way, is it, it's, it's a Fallen Angel. It's got no wings anymore and still it flies. Where is, where is the logic in that? But I'm happy for the game that it flies, though. And there is a Swords. Because ah, he's sacking the Trike to the Fallen Angel and in response, I Swords it. That does mean that Martin gains some life here. He's on 21 now. And he's playing a Nevenerals Disc. That's pretty sweet. We haven't seen that before. And end step, I'm using my Gem Day Tome. Playing another Mountain. Am I going to now use my Gem Day Tome main face? Or, oh, I'm actually playing a Stone Rain, getting rid of the Mishra's Factory. Mishra's Factory being really strong with that Nevenerals Disc, right? The Disc destroys everything except for Lance. So your Mishra's Factory survives. And here we see a strip mine. Is he now also going to strip maybe my Mishra's Factory? He doesn't have to. He can just wait till I activate it and then in response he can actually activate the disc. Okay, but he is doing it. Probably wants to attack me for one with the Iron Man. Exactly. Putting me on 12. The problem here for Martin is he can only do one damage a turn and I've got that Gem Day Tome and Martin kind of knows he's going to find something with the Gem Day Tome. You know, he's going to find another creature, maybe a big flyer or so. Or just direct damage, actually, which is better in this case. Because I don't want to play out a big flyer because he can remove it. So I just want to play out a um, maybe a big X spell. Then again, Martin's still on 21. It's actually looking quite good for him. Still, still, I would really consider popping the disc and just getting rid of the Jam Day Tome. It, it's never good to see your opponent draw twice as many cards as you. Eventually, that's going to cost you the game. And it's a difficult situation now for Martin because, you know, if he pops the disc, it means he trades a disc and his brass man. And he's doing it. And I understand. I think it's a good decision. But it, it doesn't feel great. You know, you want to have more value out of your disc. But I think in this case, really, it's a good decision, Martin. And playing a Felwer Stone. So now these Felwer Stones are kind of useless in this late game scenario. There is a Mana Vault. 
Look at the amount of lands on the side of Martin, by the way. I mean, only three lands. And there is a Dragon Whelp. There is a Quick Terror. So those Terrors have been very valuable from the sideboard. Because now he's playing with Terrors and with Swords. So he's got a lot of answers to my creatures. And I'm sure he boarded in uh, a COP Red in there that he hasn't found yet. Because that's another great card against me. And there is a Karma. And this is a problem because Scrubland is a Plains but also a Swamp. So he's going to get two damage a turn. I mean, he's still pretty high up. He's now on 19. But on the long run, this is annoying. And what if I can play a double Karma? I think I boarded in two Karmas from the sideboard. Then he gets four damage a turn. Wow. Let's hope for Martin that I don't find my second Karma here. And I'm passing turn. It looks like I'm finding a lot of lands and flower stones in this particular game. Martin is slowly building. I mean, he's got mana vault and he's got four. So, I mean, potentially he's, yeah, I mean, potentially he's got seven mana, right? So he can cast something. It would be cool if he can now find a Hell's Caretaker because he's got a lot of good creatures in the bin. Hell's Caretaker and Tetravus, and he's, he's in really good shape. If he can find those two components of his deck, I'm not really doing anything. Tapping six here, there's a Triskelion, okay. So he can start hitting me for four each turn. There's a Disenchant though. He's going to hurt me, of course, for three. going to put me on eight. But this is annoying now because now Martin needs to invest four mana to untap the mana vault or take a damage. But he's also taking two damage a turn from the Karma. He's now on 15. He's going to untap the vault. He's going to take two from the Karma. Going to go to 13. Going to play City of Brass. So he's got to wait a whole turn before he can do something again. Let's hope for Martin that he can do something good. And I'm just trying to find anything, really. And um, looking at my hand here, I'm not sure what I'm drawing. Maybe a lot of lands. What I sometimes do, and I don't know if, if this sounds familiar. Maybe I shouldn't say, say all my tricks, but I, I keep a land in hand because it, it, you can pretend it to be anything. And I'm trying to do, really look at it and think about it. So I kind of like that, that show element of magic. And I believe I've got two cards in hand now. They're probably rubbish. Maybe I've got like a direct damage X spell. Oh, I do. Okay, so I'm going to play an X spell. Taking two damage. Playing a huge disintegrate here on Martin. And he's on three. And then with that karma. Oh, man. He's going to drop to one next turn. Oh, man. He only has one turn playing another Swamp. He's dead, as good as dead. Let's see what he can do. Plays a Dark Ritual. Maybe a Drain Life? Oh, a Drain Life! That's pretty funny. So he's going to drain me. That is pretty nice. Of course, at Chaos uh, or City of Brass, doesn't really matter. Look at my life, though. I'm on one. He's on five. I'm on one. I didn't realize I was dead low. Oh, he only needs one more damage if he had one more Swamp. Putting my City of Brasses away, you know, I don't want to tap those. I don't want to accidentally kill myself here. But Martin, that was a great play. I thought I had you. There is, oh man, Lightning Bolt, you go to two, then it's your turn. You take damage from the Karma. Oh, I've killed you three times with a Lightning Bolt. That's kind of cool for me, but oh man. Martin, you almost had me there with the drain life. I was on one, uno, ein, fünf. You almost had me, man. Darn it, and we didn't see Hell's Caretaker. That's a shame. I, I hope uh, that for the remainder of the tournament, you get to cast lots and lots of Hell's Caretakers and show the full potential of your deck. For now, I'm gonna thank you for bringing such a cool deck to the table and wish you all the best in the tournament. So talking about the tournament, the way it works now, I've won three to zero. So I'm starting this tournament off with three points. That's great. And I've got two more matches to play. If you like this, I will be posting it every Tuesday. So my other two matches in this uh, tournament, and maybe I'll advance to T16. If not, I'll show you another top 16 match all the way to the finals of the Reprint Masters. And if you wanna know more about the Reprint Masters, there's more information in the description below, including a link to the tournament website with all the deck photos, but also the results. So be careful, if you don't wanna see the results, simply don't click the tab that says results, okay? So if you don't wanna see the spoilers, don't do that. But it's a really cool page where you can check out all the decks of all the contestants, and maybe you're a budget brewer yourself and you want to make some budget old school decks. I think it's a great resource, right? Because all the decks on there are made by reprints. So 
yeah, it could be a nice starting point for you. So this was the episode of today. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoy what you've seen, if you like what I do here at Timmy Talks, you can show your appreciation by leaving a like, leaving a comment, sharing this on your socials and hit that subscribe button. So if you're new to the channel, welcome to Timmy Talks and hit that subscribe button and become a sub. It's really worth it. And you're actually helping me and the channel, of course, to grow, which is important. Another way um, of how you can support the channel, uh, you can become a patron like Martin. And the nice thing is when you become a patron, uh, you're supporting the channel financially and you help me organize tournaments, organize other events. You can join the Discord and your name will be in the end scroll. Talking about the end scroll, let's take a look at the end scroll at the fantastic, the amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.